It took 200 years in the accumulation of the work by Galileo, Kepler, and Newton for Copernicus's heliocentric model that the Earth and other planets orbit the Sun, 200 years for this to be fully incorporated into common scientific understanding. It took another 100 years for the Catholic Church to fully embrace it. Now, over the last 80 years, we've started being told by those who are in a position to know that the UFO phenomena is in fact real, that evidence exists proving it's not human technology. Not only that, but studies into quantum mechanics and consciousness are beginning to question the very concept of physicalism. The very nature of our reality seems to be much more interesting and strange than we've all been led to believe. But more and more high-level officials are coming forward and unequivocally stating there is a non-human intelligent presence on this planet. Colonel Carl Nell, whose resume and list of accolades and qualifications would take 10 minutes to get through, is the latest to join their ranks after his recent talk at the SALT conference in New York. Former Rear Admiral of the Navy and Administrator of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Tim Gallaudet, quickly backed him up. Aside from the words of senior level officials, we've had reports of sightings and encounters from every walk of life, from military to ordinary members of society for nearly 100 years, maybe even longer. There are still many who haven't had an experience or a sighting and are not convinced by the mere words of others. They demand evidence, and who can blame them? This is paradigm-shifting knowledge. Would any number or caliber of individual coming forward be enough, or is this so far outside the normal accepted reality that it's something you would need to experience firsthand? What if it was someone close to you, your doctor, your neighbor, your parent, your best friend? Could the president sway you? Evidence or proof of UFOs has been accumulating seemingly throughout human history. But for any of us, capturing irrefutable proof of something so advanced, obscure, and elusive seems nearly impossible. We've seen all the Navy fighter videos officially confirmed by the Pentagon and read stories of hundreds of military encounters. But we all have a threshold unique to us that must be met for us to accept something. Especially something that challenges everything we know. The hearings in the House Oversight Committee with former intelligence officer Major David Grush and former Navy pilots David Fravor and Ryan Graves are what got my attention, but I still didn't buy in 100%. I was certainly moved by what these credible individuals said, but rather than relying on their words, I began doing my own research. I soon learned that the Pentagon had already admitted UFOs were real, that they were not our experimental aircraft, our allies, or our adversaries. We've captured them on multiple sensors to rule out misidentification, and their capabilities far surpass what we can achieve with our known physics models. David Grush has seen photographic evidence, official documentation, and received classified oral testimony from 40 first-hand witnesses who worked in these special access programs involved with crash retrieval and reverse engineering of UAP. He cross-referenced these witnesses with his colleagues to make sure there was no circular reporting, contrary to the narrative some in the mainstream try to push. He then took these witnesses and the evidence to multiple inspector generals who found his claims credible and urgent. We've all heard this. But he also handed this evidence to the Senate Intel Committee, and Carl Nell is likely seen as much if not more than Grush. Tim Gallaudet recently mentioned that he's working on reinstating his clearance so he can view data at John Hopkins University from a submarine USO encounter in the 1980s. He also mentioned he was contacted by the National Science Foundation, who's going to have a UAP communications workshop. Senator Marco Rubio has stated that whistleblowers have been coming to these Senate committees for years with information about these UFO programs. So tangible data and evidence exists. And while the people, we, have not seen the evidence ourselves, we can look at how those who were shown the evidence have behaved. We can tell by their actions whether that evidence was compelling. So did those in the Senate Intel Committee dismiss the evidence David Grush and other whistleblowers have been presenting? No, they did not. Even with the stigma still in place, some of the most powerful elected officials in America, both Democrat and Republican, have put their careers and reputations on the line and have now passed five separate pieces of UFO legislation, with more on the way. For the first time in the history of the United States of America, Laws pertaining to UFOs, craft of non-human origin, and intelligence have been passed. Think about that. Now, we all know how slow the government moves on issues, but look how fast they have taken action on UAP just in the last five years. Credible and urgent, remember that. 
The problem, as Senator Chuck Schumer and Senator Mike Brown so eloquently touched on in their colloquy on the Senate floor, was that this information has been hidden from Congress themselves. This is just the evidence the government has collected. I'm not even talking about the personal evidence of millions of people who have had their own sightings and experiences. Everyone from pilots and military personnel who are trained observers to ordinary people you might know, they've seen evidence for themselves. But why isn't there better evidence in the public? Well, the technology that the public has access to is vastly inferior to the censored platforms that our military has. So it shouldn't be a surprise that all the best data is classified. Then you have to consider the technology these UAP possess. Concealing themselves with cloaking, EMP technology that might be able to suppress or disrupt or interfere with our ability to capture them isn't out of the question. We know they've replied to friend or foe requests on encrypted transmission, so communicating with our technology is well within their capability. So blocking or shutting it down can't be ruled out either. Many cases also report altered perceptions, with observers often seeing different shaped objects of the same event. Award-winning Stanford University professor and executive director of the Soul Foundation, Gary Nolan, just recently mentioned that there is someone posting photos or videos online of genuine non-human craft. Emory University professor Courtney Brown and retired FAA air traffic controller Lincoln Lounsbury have been capturing UFOs on custom high frame rate infrared cameras. The Galileo project at Harvard isn't waiting for the government to reveal their data, so they're building highly capable sensor arrays to capture UAP themselves. The Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies is a group of scientists, former military, law enforcement, and other professionals utilizing scientific principles, methodologies, and practices to advance the study of UAP, observed and reported around the globe. And there are many, many others both studying and capturing data. So the public inquiry is rapidly expanding, but we might not even be able to comprehend the capabilities or intentions of these NHI. Maybe they're slowly teasing us to get us acclimated to this idea that they're here. All research points to there being multiple types of NHI, so maybe some are just more careful than others. We can't assume anything. I've heard people use the phrase, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. But I would contend there's actually a mounting pile of evidence. And a lot of very intelligent people, certainly smarter than me, and I've only named a handful of them, are realizing and pursuing this. So why doesn't Grush, Nell, or others who have access to classified information just leak something, put an end to this once and for all? But I ask you, what could they leak that would convince everyone? What if they leaked a 4K video? Well, half the world would say it's CGI and the Pentagon would try to discredit it. We've already seen documents, photos, video, testimony. We could end up no further along than we are now, only that individual would be in jail. To that point, I think this slow drip of information we've all been getting has been the plan all along. And it's that slow pace that will allow those who still can't fathom the possibility that UFOs are real, non-human intelligence is here, our government's covered this up, that we've all been lied to. It will give those people enough time to slowly incorporate these ideas piece by piece for a smooth as possible transition into a post-disclosure world. But even though I think this slow disclosure plan is well underway, we need to stay loud. We need to support and let our elected officials know this is an issue we care about. We need to pressure them to bring transparency and stand on the right side of history. This is the first topic that has me caring about politics, which is insane. But just as importantly, we also need to talk to those around us. We can't solely rely on the government for disclosure. We all have a part in this as well. People listen to those they care about. Being afraid to have this discussion with our friends and family has been part of the problem this whole time. It's frustrating being on the outside looking in because we all just want answers. Even those of us who know for certain the phenomena is real. We want the government to move faster. We want those around us to take this more seriously. But while it may not be moving at the pace we desire, if you stop and truly take an objective look at what has transpired just over the last seven years, folks, it's happening. But if you really step back with a bird's eye view and look at how our culture has become accustomed to the idea of aliens and UFOs, it almost seems like the process to acclimate us began a long time ago. And if these visitors are as advanced as it seems, they've likely had a hand in the pace this is all playing out, regardless of whether our elected officials are aware of it. So I cut them a little bit of slack because remember, it's been hidden from most of them too. When it all comes down to it, everyone has a threshold of proof that must be reached that's unique to them. But hopefully soon, we'll all have the privilege of knowing unequivocally and can take that next step of figuring out what it all means together. That's it for me today. 
Be good to yourself and each other, and I'll see you on the flip side.